What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be showing you Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and a somewhat optimization guide. The options are very limited, but I'll be running through them and telling you what kind of performance I get. Thanks to Ubisoft for providing me a key to the game. That being said, the game has just come out. It's relatively stable. I haven't had any issues other than a small soft lock from skipping a bit of dialogue, or rather not choosing to interact with it. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. As this game's in-game options are super limited, I'd highly recommend checking my Windows optimization guides linked down below for extra performance. You'll find a Windows 10, 11, and Nvidia guides to help you out with your system. Beyond that, as long as you meet the minimum requirements, this game isn't too taxing, lighting isn't too crazy, things like that, and I'm pretty sure there's some kind of upscaling built into it, although we don't actually get to peek under the hood. This game, being pretty much a console game, doesn't have any built-in FPS counter, so you'll need to use a third-party piece of software if you're interested in tracking your performance in-game. I'd highly recommend MSI Afterburner and River Tuner. It's probably one of the easiest ones to set up. Also, obviously, as this is a 2.5D side-scroller type, game, there's not really any built-in benchmarks, it's not too taxing, and for the most part should run on most semi-modern to modern PCs. In the top left you can see my FPS counter overlay, and one of the interesting things is that the menu doesn't seem to have a capped FPS, meaning I'm pushing out a thousand FPS, which is probably eating quite a bit of my system, producing quite a lot of heat, etc. Capping your FPS is usually a good thing. First of all, I'll head into options. At the very top, I'd recommend playing in full screen mode instead of full screen windowed for the best performance. Resolution should match your display, and of course the hertz as well. VSync, I'd recommend having off if you're going to measure your frame rate. And at least we can uncap our FPS from 60 all the way up to maximum, which is pretty much uncapped. This is great, especially for a console port or console type game, as usually it's locked to 30 or 60. However, you'll probably want to enable VSync later on, as this game seems to give quite a bit of screen tearing, or at least it's really noticeable. Graphics quality and anti-aliasing are the only two options we get, for which we have normal, high, and ultra, and for anti-aliasing we have none, FXAA, and SMAA. For now, I'll start on Ultra and SMAA just to get a baseline for performance, but other than that, we have no more control. So without further ado, I'll head back and continue my game. Just a quick note, I've already passed the tutorial and this is the first level. Loading times are pretty good and right over here, I'm setting at a solid 360 FPS. There's a bit of aliasing around the horses and things like that at 2K Ultra settings with SMAA, but if we change to FXAA, you'll notice a blur pretty much over the entire image and it doesn't really help the edges and aliased lines. If we disable anti-aliasing entirely, the aliasing gets even worse and of course there's practically zero change in FPS at all. We've been capped at pretty much a solid 360 this entire time, which is really good actually. I'd recommend leaving it on SMAA. MAA as it's as good as you'll get. For the most part, I think you could probably use reshade as well as a few extra things on that end to clean it up a bit further and improve how the game looks. This is the ultra preset with SMAA. Moving to high, we go from 360 to around 450 FPS, which is massive. Then down to the lowest option, normal, we jump to around 475 and we don't really gain that much extra. It's only around an extra 20 FPS, but the previous jump was 150 or so. So for now, I'll crank it back up to ultra and we'll continue. Heading to a hopefully more graphic intense area. There doesn't really seem to be any shifts in the FPS at all. It's a pretty solid 360 everywhere that I go, even though VSync is off and I have my FPS set to max. There's nothing too intensive, which means that it's probably really accessible for most hardware nowadays. Do keep in mind, even though I do have a powerful graphics card, a 3080 Ti, I am playing it 2K, so it is going to be a bit more taxing. During cutscene, that drops to about 315, but there aren't any major frame stutters, frame lag, etc. It's all really smooth. Even with more graphic intense things happening with lots of reflections, we're still sitting at around 300-ish FPS, which is pretty good. Even during combat, things are pretty smooth. Ultimately, you're not going to have a terrible experience with this game on most hardware in most scenarios. Only in certain situations where things are changing quite a bit, you may notice a little bit of frame drops during cutscenes, camera changes, etc. Ultimately, if you're not skipping dialogue that you should be taking, you're probably not going to encounter any soft locks either, although it is pretty easy to 
do so. I have encountered one just finishing the tutorial. If this is the kind of game that gets you going, then it's a pretty good choice. Now, even though I was given a key to have a look at this game, I wasn't really told to say anything other than I was given a key, so opinions are my own. So, hopefully you found this guide somewhat useful. Thank you for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!